somewhat inconvenient location <laughs> at a somewhat inconvenient time. You can tell, you have to advertise it, you can tell people the purpose of it, and um, I don't know that you can ask people not to come, but you can do those things, but it has to be a public meeting. It has to be a public meeting, okay. No. Okay, well I noticed yeah. that I'm, I'm the chair of this meeting. No. I've been sort of incommunicado for a few days, so my apologies, but so that's interesting. And I'll endeavor to do that. Uh, what what are people's is people's pleasure? Should we wait or uh, is there something we can jump right into? <clears throat> we get started on the second thing and then pick up from there. Sure. Does that work for everybody? Sure. To do that? Okay, great. Yeah. And one minute ticker or so is the second thing a better or what is the second thing? The second thing is that report. That report? I don't see anything. That's an outtake box. I have it all. 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 I would no, suggest we wait because I think that part of that discussion is going to be part of it. Can we talk one at yeah. a time so that everybody could hear it? Hey guys, let me let me suggest this. What about if we had uh, if, if there have been other committee meetings, we could have reports from committee meetings, even though it's not on the agenda. Does that make some sense? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, you know for 15 minutes, and then we'll do the uh, facilitated part of it, and then we'll talk about the day. Is that is that work for everybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do that. Uh, have there been some committee meetings in the, in the recent? Um, <laughs> I, this is the police working group, and um, so Bill Randolph and I met, and we're talking about how, how what would be our process for um, going forward to uh, have a better understanding of police advisory boards. And Janet uh, has agreed, because she has connections in Dayton, that she would help us make a, an appointment and probably go with us in Dayton to talk to the mayor about how their Dayton community advisory board works and what the successes are and what the criteria are. And so it's just a matter of uh, launching our research. Excellent. Good. Yeah. Um, weren't you also going to look into bodies that were not like an advisory board, but other sorts of community oversight bodies that I'm just generically calling advisory board. The, the, the thing we're leaving out are review boards. We don't want to, we don't see But it. wasn't there, a, there wasn't, isn't a review board somebody who, um, what people come with complaints. complaints? Yeah. But isn't there a third side of body sort of like this one that other places have, <coughs> which are, I don't remember discussing that and talking about it. But is there, didn't you suggest someone? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, the, uh, yeah, the Cleveland Police Commission that was set up as well, a result. Well, it's a commission. Well, there's one in yeah. Cincinnati, too, instead mm -hmm. of have a justice. Yeah, That's when there's it. big, big problems mm -hmm. in the community, and then the police are required through the Justice Department to go through a process. So, that would be short part of their consent, like we are. It's short term, and, and it's, it's well, focused it's on. I'm talking about something that's longer term, but it would, would be more permanent, like uh -huh. our. I thought that I thought we had identified that there are places where I thought that have. was one in Dayton. Isn't that the one that well, Janet works with? This is the one we're going to talk to. I don't know what they call themselves, but I'm just generically calling them their advisory board. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like part of the research is what these different groups do. Yeah, that's well, not only what they do, fine. but what works and what doesn't work in terms of people appointed to it. And, and actually, there's um, I'm not trying to remember for sure. I think it's Yale. Uh, school of Law is carrying out research on what works in advisory boards and what doesn't. So there's interest in there and how, how we can make them work. Mm -hmm. We're the best representation in that kind of thing. So it sounds like you're going to take at least one field trip. At least one, yeah. At least one field trip. And are other people, in, would they be invited to accompany you if people want to learn? Or? Mm -hmm. I suppose, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. up, to four, up to four people. Yeah, I don't want to. Well, because otherwise, then you've got to go for them. All right. Any other committee that we're doing committee reports while we're waiting for Janet to get here? It's going to facilitate our interpersonal issues. We met Mayor's Court Saturday, and I don't know if you guys saw my message about that with the and uh, I'll just 
go over what it is that we talked about and jump in if uh, anything else. Uh, we also invited Pam Kanine, and we talked about various aspects of Mayor's Court about which we're concerned, discussed the need for a prosecutor or you know, something uh, like that, and uh, the need to review the Mayor's Court process. This is, since I wrote the minutes, I put this in here. Uh, I was suggesting that we look at the process from a citation to a person leaving the court and when they're done and what goes on in between. Uh, we all agreed, you know, very strongly that the position of the mayor in mayor's court should not be lost or undermined in any way by any actions or new additions to the process like having a prosecutor or doing anything else. Wait, I didn't catch what you said. Say that again? That last sentence. We all agree very strongly that the position of the mayor and mayor's court shouldn't be lost or undermined by any any recommendations that we make anything and any actions or new, that are taken or act, uh, additions to the process. Um, there might be some new positions in the court where they come from, how they're paid for, the scope, etc., to be determined. But to you know meet to comply with legal requirements for mayor's courts in Ohio. Uh, and uh, there may need to be changes in the process or processes to meet those requirements also. The overall concern that there are external pressures for us to do, do things a different way than maybe we've been doing them so that we can keep the mayor's court. You know, we can talk all we want about how we want it to be, but we can't stop uh, the Supreme Court from doing it. <coughs> Uh, and it would be desirable to introduce into the process some some kind of pretrial diversion program to include things such as restorative justice, mediation, et cetera. Again, what's on that list, who's on that, in that you know, process, you know, he's yet to be determined, but so that it's more a formal codified process, going back to what you guys in council and others have said about, we don't want to just make a recommendation, people say, yeah, great idea, and then you know, not do it later when some new person comes into the job, but have it documented, codified, you know, whatever. So, miss anything, anybody? Laura? Uh, no, that, that's, that's Do we have another meeting date? Well, we had one Saturday, so. Why not? What, is there another, another date? <laughs> when are you going to be out of town? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, so we, far, we, you've been pretty good at saying yeah, that. Yeah, no, we, <laughs> we, we have. Yeah, that, that, what, Dave said that they're, the, that they're sort of combined because in order to have the intervention between the, uh, be, the before the court, we need a prosecutor or someone. The mayor cannot, uh, as I understand, Laura, the, the, the mayor cannot on on his, her own make change the citation to and divert them without some intervention by a. a prosecutor or someone in a legal authority. So the two things they've said are related. Can, uh, who's taking minutes? Well, we, we yeah, talk it's, uh, yeah, it's, I don't mind if anyone is wanting to take that. That doesn't bother me. Okay, any, any other, anything else from that committee? Uh, any other? I want to Steve, are you taking I am taking minutes. Okay. I'm just, just clear. But I'm right. But no, it's for future elections. Right, I better leave just copy and paste it with you. Okay. Any other committee reports? Anybody else? Any other I just wanted to, it's not a committee report. Um, I just wanted to report council has first in depth discussion on um, <coughs> the recommendation of social worker. And what was brought to us was a more developed, a fully developed proposal from the chief and the uh, village manager, which is um, being called police outreach something. Not coordinator. I keep saying specialist. Specialist. That's what it is. Yes. Um, and there was the idea. So the discussion Monday night uh, was um, basically our legal counsel said the concept of it being a, a uh, contracted services is not going to work. So. Uh, they were talking about $20,000 a year. Partly, council had, you know, expressed concerns about the, the uh, how how big our police budget is, and so I think they were trying to be sensitive to that. But um, but anyway, uh, and Marianne wrote basically we're, we're passing our budget now, and we that 20000 had been put in, but until we complete. Council makes a decision about 
uh, what exactly we're doing, we took that out of the budget. Um, Brian, I think, because he thought it was, it's probably going to cost more than $20,000, which it clearly is now, because if it's not a contracted service, it will be more. Um, and at the next meeting, at the first uh, meeting in December, hopefully we're going to have a Skype conversation with a police social worker at the Cape House. So we're hoping for that, because I think to talk to someone. Um, some people were frustrated that, uh, you know, that that we council wants to have a discussion. There's been lots of public discussion, but actually council has not had a discussion. And it, we, we were given a recommendation and we shook our head yes, but we actually haven't had a conversation. So I think I think there's a feeling that we will try to make a decision fairly quickly, but that we want to, it's gonna be actually a very important, I think, addition to our police department. And we want time to consider it thoroughly. And, uh, so, and, it, and then it gives us a, also an opportunity. I, part of the reason I felt like opening this question about the police budget is important just because it makes sense, I think, in the next year, I think Marianne and I both feel this, um, to look at the whole budget and be thinking about, you know, how do we keep those costs contained because so much of it is staff and it just keeps growing because of the increases people need to get to pay and so on and the cost of health care and so on. So that's a bigger discussion. We will make this decision before that discussion is complete, I'm sure. But. Excellent. Any questions for Judith about the outreach specialist yeah, or Mary? Um, no. I agree with what Judith said that um, I Council, I believe, is fully in support of this concept. At the same time, at least some of us on Council don't want to see the police budget increasing. Um, board is here. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Just a quick question. Uh, was it a challenge with, you know, I understand we're calling it uh, specialists. Was it a challenge just saying social worker? It was about, I felt like uh, that it was kind of a diminished, um, it, it was not be called social worker because it, of the cost of a social worker. And so it was partly about, so it was a lot, I think, for the cost. I think there was some technicality as well that the chief felt in calling it a social worker. That he, no, that, that was what I understood for some it, reason. It had something to do with that type of certification or something along those lines. And I think he also, like the idea of not saying police social worker because that sounds like the person is an officer basically, but the person was going to be more uh, uh, working in the community, so I think he wanted to make sure that that was expressed in the title. Okay, any other quick reports? Because I know Janet came in and we, we want to kind of get to that item. Uh, any other quick reports of ongoing work that's happened since our last meeting? Okay, then Janet, can we turn this over to you? Do you know why you're here? I do. Oh, well, good. <laughs> yes. Come on up. Can I just scoot up to the table? Yeah. 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 Hey. So for those of you that, I think most of you know me, I'm Janet Mueller, and uh, I'm here as part of the Village Mediation Program, and. Um, Judith and I talked and um, she requested that maybe it would be helpful to just have someone here to help have a conversation um, um, and my role here is to help that conversation be as productive as it can be. Um, the purpose of the conversation from your agenda is really to support everyone and um, the working relationships that are going on after um, what has been happening recently, what was posted on Facebook, the discussions after, and sort of all the things around that that um, would be helpful to uh, put on the table and address it if we can. It's a, it's a limited amount of time we have today. It's probably, um, I mean, I don't, it'll depend on what you all need, if that's enough time, but we also, um, at, so we have uh, about an hour set aside for this, and I would say, um, probably close to about 8 o'clock, we should check in and decide if this, if we need to have something outside of this meeting to address any of these issues or any um, further plans either part of this meeting, but to, to know that there's limited time and to
to see what we can accomplish in this time and also think ahead if we need to. Um, yeah. You know, I'm concerned. I, I, I certainly think um, mediation is, is really needed in this situation, but I'm concerned about it and I would trust your judgment. To me, the mediation, there are two levels of mediation that are needed. One is a personal, at the personal level between the two individuals uh, that, that uh, were affected. The second is between the individual committee member that made the post and the committee as a whole. And I'm, I'm just really worried about trying to do both of those at the same time. Yeah, I can see that as a concern. And um, I think that because of this meeting happening now, we thought we should start here. But if it ends up being something that we decide needs to happen in a different order, we can decide that today as well. Well, I had uh, reached out to Janet Behrman right away to um, see if this could be uh, something for a restorative justice circle, which I think it could. Uh, she's willing to do that. And that would involve anyone who felt like they were impacted, immediately impacted. So I would, I would assume. And of course, everyone has to agree, but John and David, I would want to be a part of it. I, I imagine the police chief. I don't know mm -hmm. who would be involved. So that is something that could be more of a dealing with the harm, the, the feeling level more maybe in depth than how, how does mediation differ from restorative justice? <laughs> I, I, see res, the, I see restorative justice as being an umbrella. An umbrella that looks at, that says there has been harm done. It could be between two people. It could be in a community. But there has been some kind of harm done, some kind of wrenching of the community fabric. And there are different processes under restorative justice, but, but there is a specific intent to look at what has the harm, what is the harm that's been done, who has been harmed, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily one person harming another person. Everyone could feel harm. And what do we need to do to heal? That's the, that is the general umbrella. Now mediation, could easily be part of restorative justice. I read, I see, uh, not all mediations would be part of restorative justice. Some are very technical and aren't dealing with that sense of harm. But, uh, but the kind of uh, process that uh, Jennifer uses, and I haven't been a part of it, but my understanding is it's a circle and there are specific questions that are asked. And it's somewhat more directive than transformative mediation. Does that answer your question? No, not really, but that's, that's okay. I'll see how it plays out. Well, I'd like to start with um, at least one, maybe two things that I think are um, not maybe so interpersonal, but they're related to um, guidelines. One is, um, and this is not to um, support John's action, because I <coughs> didn't, didn't and don't support that action, but I have some empathy in the sense of, um, I don't think we had a clear committee task force understanding about how we could or couldn't participate in the election. And I know that I personally had the thought about, well, do I want to put a certain sign in my yard? And then I thought, well, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I should be just totally neutral publicly, so I won't do that. Um, and then John, with a little more passion, is like, I am going to do that. But I think he, you know, I was with him in the sense of, I didn't know. Could we, as a task force of the council, you know, go rah-rah about a candidate or go against a candidate? I mean, that wasn't clear to me. And I so think that that's that 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 something that could be that. clarified in the future. So that seems like an important question you're saying. Whatever it is, that that was something that was unclear. And it was like having some clarity about it would be helpful for yeah. and it made it possible for what I think was probably an error. And I don't see that that was an issue at all. The, the, the election did not, I think that was a tangential issue. I don't see that as being part of the... Well, John's post was, just a, was actually opposing a candidate 
in, you know, in an election, we may, as individuals and as private citizens, either support or oppose, you know, write a letter for to the paper, put something on, you know, that's, that's what I mean by participating in the election. I, I'd have to read it again because I don't see that that was the impetus for it, but that's... I don't see that either. It was. It was the impetus. I okay. think that was the. I mean, I think that's something you agree with. I mean, I didn't, I didn't like that. Then that's answer. But I thought that's what it was. Then that's yes. answer. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. And he was basically saying, "Don't vote for David." I mean, I'm sorry, but that's what he said. Right. And you know, and I might have said something like that about another candidate, but I didn't. Well, he did. But neither of us really got any clarity that we should or shouldn't. So, what are the parameters for that for someone? On a town council, council task force. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be one thing that so I would bring forward. I, I also, um, just in thinking about the process a little bit, didn't know if John or David wanted a chance to speak about, I don't, I don't know what the suggestion is of there. Does anyone have, do either of you want to speak? Does anyone have something they want to say? Or what's the, how you would like to... Engage. I do have okay. things that I want to say as a council person, but I think I would want John and David to be the I, I would like to speak as well, but I think it's a okay. What's your thought on that, David and John? Yeah, I'd like to speak, sure. Okay. Should, should I go first? I have a prepared statement. Do okay. you want to go first, David, then? Yeah, I, okay. I believe that the task force started members that volunteered to work together to investigate ways to improve the justice system in Yellow Springs. I can write this up and send it to you if you want, but it's in full much detail. Um, I also believe that we all brought the desire to work together with each other, with village government people, with Yellow Springs <coughs> residents, and others as appropriate you know, inside and outside the village to do this. We have and we will have different views on how to do it, but everybody wants to do the best we can for a community, and ideally for making the world a little better place. I think that's true of most people in this town, even though there's a whole lot of sniping at each other about things in general, uh, sometimes, and side-taking, but, you know, but people do come from a place of caring. We were slow to start as a task force, but we've been picking up steam and doing really good work. Um, uh, and um, particularly within the mayor's court, I know, it's been, we had a great meeting uh, um, Monday, or, or rather Saturday, and we've also presented some good recommendations to council that are in some cases already being put into place. Unfortunately, the task force's reputation has been damaged. Stress between members has been introduced and we're now distracted from our important efforts. And I want to keep working on the task we're in the middle of. I think that's the most important thing. The task force is what we're here for. Whatever happens with me and somebody else is I would separate that out, not from here. That's not the business of this task force. Task force is here for working on the justice system in this village, and that's what I want to work on. And that's my statement. So it sounds like that's what's important to you is, is <coughs> as the work has been picking up and you've been having lots of success, and people's intentions are to, even if it sometimes looks messy in Yellow Springs, are to really do the best, and you want to um, not let the damage and the distractions take you away from the work at hand. Yeah. It's the true believers that are the scariest people in the revolution, like the Khmer Rouge killing people because they wore glasses. You know, I, those are the people that scare the hell out of me. Okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, first of all, entirely agree with David that um, I, I see this issue as completely separate from uh, test from the task force's work. Um, I really didn't expect that there would be such a massive. Blow back and um, I do apologize for having this. Uh, could, could you talk a little louder? <coughs> um, sorry. Uh, let me start over. Uh, so I entirely agree with David um, that the that I see this as completely separate from the task force's work, um, and the task force's work is really what's important. And um, I didn't realize that this would cause such a um, hubbub and distract from. Uh, time that we could be spent uh, spending uh, focusing on our on uh, on our work. Um, so after the October meeting, uh, I did have some concerns about um, how the release of the report was being discussed, and so um, 
after a couple of days, I, I reached out to um, some friends, uh, basically expressed my concerns to them, was like, these, everything that happened in the meeting is public record, you should like go out and, and get it, and then like, allow, basically, and, and, and then if you basically come to, like come to your own conclusions, and if you come to, you know, similar conclusions and similar concerns and are so inclined, like share them with the community. Um, and they did request the, the uh, meeting recordings, um, but unfortunately the clerk never got back to them. And then they, I, I guess they've since followed up, and even though the meeting's been actually now uploaded online, they still haven't heard back. Um, so, uh, so I guess like at the same time, I did see my concerns as having some attached, like I did want to get the information out about other people that have watched the video um, basically have come to the conclusion that it was really more like a, like a task force issue rather than like a David Turner issue. Perhaps uh, that was my idiosyncratic seeing it, seeing issues around him. But I saw there as being an issue there that I wanted to inform people about since he was up for election. I had concerns about, about his candidacy. Ideally, I would have, like other people would have looked at it and informed the community because I really do, I mean obviously I haven't been talking about the task force publicly and critically at other times. I do generally like to basically not be engaged in like, just focus on my technical work and not engage in like critical activist work on the side. I see there as basically being a, so, a somewhat useful division of labor there. Like I see some benefits to that and then I definitely see it as being a division of labor that's basically required by Yellow Springs political culture because otherwise things like this happen. I mean, I think in, in other contexts there wouldn't even be a question of like, can a committee member be involved in an election? Um, I guess I, I would see that as being an issue specific to Yellow Springs political culture where people don't want, where people prefer things to be less politicized. Um, but regardless, this is the political culture I'm operating within and, you know, prefer not to get attacked. So I'm going to follow by those by those strictures. Um, I almost just want to be like, any clarifying questions that anyone has? <laughs> um, I mean, it sounds like you're, you, uh, you said a lot of things, so. I'm yeah, so I wouldn't do a similar thing like this in the future, to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you learned that that's not the way you want to do it. It sounds like that wasn't your intent in the first place, but right. because of this, the struggles for people to get the video, right. that that put you in this place where you Right, where talk. either I did it or not. It didn't happen. Yeah. So you, you may have judgment call at that point, and you have a different perspective on that now. Right. And um, you also said at the beginning that that, um, that you don't want to distract from the work yeah. um, of the committee either, and that you have a better feeling now about how politics and activism relate in Yellow Springs, and that clarity is helpful as you figure out which roles you're taking at which time. Right. Yes. So I know a lot of people want to respond. I don't know if there's any particular, how do I pick? Does that make sense? Well, I don't have to. OK, that's fine. So um, clearly, uh, council needs to discuss more what it expects of, of commission members. And so this is, in that regard, a learning experience. Also, I do think that what happened does relate to the task force. This is, in some ways, a justice issue, I think. And so we're getting to deal with it. Right. Um, but in my view, this is my personal view, um, well, part of it's my personal view, this commission is a government body. You were selected, you were, um, what do you stood up there and you swore in. It's a government body. In my view, you, if you are dealing with issues of this 
that the, this government body is dealing with, you are dealing with it as part of the government body. You're not a private citizen at that point. If you want to be a private citizen, you have to do something else. So what you did, John, in my view, is you were doing it as a task force member, as a, a government, as part of the, the government, releasing information that apparently the rest of the people had said they weren't ready to release. I wasn't at that meeting. So, you, you know, and if that were all that had happened, well, yeah, you did it in a sensational way. It's going to get people more, I mean, clearly the information is going to get people riled up. But the way that it happened is even going to get it more riled up, as opposed to having it come through council, having the police have a chance to respond. But I wasn't at that meeting, and that's not my biggest concern, frankly, because that can be remedied. My biggest concern is that you used your role as a member of the government to, to try to influence an election <laughs> and, and against someone else on this committee <coughs> for council on which your mother is a member. Like, like it, truly, when I saw all this, and like David said at the council meeting, I thought, like, that's sort of like Comey, what Comey did to uh, Hillary. You know, you put out information dissing someone, they didn't have a chance to respond, and you did it because you had particular information because you were in that role. And I was like, Lord. Um, so then that gets to the relation of the two of you. Because when we, when Judith and I were um, uh, taking people who wanted to be on the committee and looking people, there was a concern about having two family members on this committee. And a, a, a legitimate concern. Uh, but we, and we felt, and I talked to Karen and so, you know, and she said, well, Ted and I have been commissions before. So, and John, you were a member of an age group that no one else was. So we put you on this. So we thought that that, that was okay. But I do think that the fact that you were trying to do something that influenced the council meeting that Judith was on was like, it, it's, uh, I forget what the word, but I, I'm very concerned that the relationship that, that your familial relationship is getting in the way of your relationship on and influencing the you know what's happening here, and that is a concern to me. Lastly, I'm personally offended that when I texted you and called you, that you didn't get back to me. I mean, I felt like you just blew me off, and that I felt like <laughs> I didn't like that. Um, so I do think, but I do think that this is a good situation to look at this situation as, in the terms of restorative justice and if people are, are wanting to do that, then you know, I would like to have that happen. So I know there's people who haven't spoken yet. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing from you you want to be able to respond to some of that. I know that. Yeah. Is that okay with people? I think we should hear from people first. Personally. Oh, well, I would, I I would wager that his responses are going to cover most of what we everyone has to say, so to speak multiple times is kind of redundant. Okay. I'm, I mean, it's, it's possible that I can get out. I should start taking notes. Yeah, take notes. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us are. <laughs> so, that, who's next? So we're just going to go around the table. Okay. Um, I, I think that to suggest that the Post was in any way disconnected from the task force is disingenuous at best. Um, it laid out information that the task force, as a group, specifically <coughs> voted to not release until it had been finalized. Um, the Post not only circumvented the, the explicit vote of this committee, um, but it did it in such a way that it was a personal attack on one of our committee members. And I think it's caused not only irreparable harm, probably to the election, Although we'll never know, but certainly to the integrity of this task force, and that's my concern. The, the um, I, I was going to say exactly what you. This 
this committee, the first, I have two points. The first one was what she just said. This committee voted uh, t twice to not release any of the data until it was uh, put in a form that we felt it would be understood by the community. Can, can, I, can I just interject something? I don't mean, when people say that we voted not to release the data, that implies... Not, not to release it until... Okay. Well, but Some, I want to be clear that we never said don't release it. We said don't publicize it. It's yeah, a public okay. document. Yeah. Well, okay. we, are we in agreement on that? Yes, we are. Because that was, I mean, there was, we stumbled over that for a few minutes at the last meeting, but then we, I think we all got clarity on okay. that. To not it's, bring it to council and to not publicize right. it until all the errors, of which there right. were numerous yeah. errors, That's right. okay. and the questions were answered. And we, yes. we, in fact, have volunteered to write a summary That's for right. it that mm -hmm. would be a more intelligible, more apt to be understood uh, uh, for, for the community. But the second point that I haven't heard said yet, what offended, it, it wouldn't have bothered me as much if the Post had said, uh, you know, I'm not going to vote for David Turner, uh, but, but the Post not only politicized uh, the thing, but it, it made statements which were just plain false. Uh, it implied that David Turner had blocked this report from going out. It, I voted with David Turner not to release it, not because I didn't want the thing to, to be publicized, but because it was in a form that was just not, not, not uh, to, up to the standards that I think this committee or any committee would have wanted uh, to have released. So it was it, the the statement in the post was 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 told, I mean, it, to me it was it was Donald Trump. You attack a person, you try to block their election, and you do it by all kinds of, of, of maybe not lies but distortions, and that I think was really really wrong, uh, and it it, uh, it it disturbed me very much the what was in that post. Steve. Going around the table, I know you're taking notes. I don't know if you want to add anything at this point or you want to pass. <clears throat> um, I was at the first meeting when we um, decided that it was uh, that it wasn't ready, and so I'm glad to clarify that it was more of it wasn't ready versus not being released. Exactly. Um, and, and so I, I wasn't at the last meeting where. People still felt that way. I read over the um, or the previous minutes, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it was a decision made by a lot of other people. I think that's that it's that, and so the misrepresentation. I think is what gets uh, is what worries me. The concept that someone can say blank that's not necessarily the truth, but when it's when it's out there like that, it's out there like that. It wasn't a conversation that was just talked about, and someone said they heard this. This is like I know this for a fact, and because of uh, the position area, and uh, that it, it's a scary feeling to know that I could say something in a meeting and then it could be turned into something else to the public and. Uh, not that that doesn't happen, and that's almost basically the purpose of Facebook, it seems. <laughs> uh, but I, it almost felt malicious, even though I know that you could find it wasn't, but it felt that way when, when reading it. I, um, and I'm sure if I went on the committee and I read that, I would have immediately assumed it was malicious. That's, and I, that's what the intent felt like. So I, I don't really have any. I don't know about any more of what should happen or how that works, but I, but I know that, that that was a concern I had after after that happened was um, thinking that I'm on the same committee, uh, a commission, whatever it may be, with someone, and you know the goal is to be a team and try to accomplish things, and for someone to. Um, yeah, use information that happened in the meeting, in public meetings too, but to sort of skew it so that that, that they felt they felt malicious whether it was or not, and that was my only take. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
that are worried me. Okay. Yeah, I wrote down a few minutes so I could remember what I wanted to say. Um, so, well, first I wanted to say, I, John told me he was feeling compelled to put something up, and the only option was Facebook, and I strongly advised him against it. Um, and the primary reason was because, you know, I, I think it's fine to, it, it felt too personal to me. It felt, I've always opposed personal attacks. I think, uh, I think it's important to debate issues, and to disagree strongly is great. I, won't, I think that's that's very important, um, and I, but I, I felt like it just felt too personal, and um, sometimes speaking what you think is the truth is not useful. I often say some things are best left unsaid, <laughs> and I feel that's true, um, and especially in venues like Facebook, which I don't go on very often, but it can, you know, real out of control. On the other hand, I also thought, at the same time that I thought that, when John insisted this was the thing he felt he needed to do to, that it was important, I also thought kind of what Jerry Sims said Monday night, and I'm saying this, so he said it, not John's mother, uh, that when you run for elected office, you're going to be criticized, it's just part of the territory, that John had a right to share his concerns, I'm just quoting Jerry, that people like electron we're in the electronic age and Facebook is the way people communicate with one another, that people can parse the statements that other people make regarding elect elections, and um, that we want our young people engaged and being and uh, trying to do the right thing. Um, at the September meeting there there was a conversation that was happening. And I felt uncomfortable with it, and um, and I think it was what John was trying to reference is that um, the and I do want to say we didn't have the authority to release or not release this document, and so that isn't on the table. The fact that I, as the liaison, did not clarify that to the committee, I think that I wasn't clear on that. I think you know I feel like I erred strongly in that. Um, we were talking about relief, you know. Um, a summary that would make digestible and understandable to the community that would be sent to council. We were talking about releasing or not releasing the document, but I think we were talking about it in error because it wasn't, that wasn't, we didn't have the authority to do that. So, but anyway, there was this other discussion going on, um, which was as soon as the report came out, or, or we got the report in September, we hardly had time to review it ahead of time, and the main, <coughs> the main uh, issue was this issue, the main concern in the conclusion was that the odds of a black citizen uh, being cited by the police was 1.47 times greater than a white citizen. And I remember Steve McQueen, you saying, uh, uh, you know, some of us were saying, you know, this is, right immediately there was a concern that this would unfairly, um, that the police department would be unfairly accused of being racist. That was one concern that people were talking about it, and some people were talking about it in the committee. Wait, Others were talking about it. Please? Are you saying that I said that? No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not saying you said that. So people said that. Right. Right. I'm backtracking. Okay. People were saying, people well, were, what people who said that? I don't I heard that. I heard I that. that. I, heard that. I may very well have said that because I, I still think that releasing yes. a number of blank, a blanket statement like that. I heard it both from Dave and from you, yes. Right, and, the no, no, yes, yeah, yeah. and you did. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm backtracking. Right. And then other people were saying, you know, this will be used to use to improve the police department. And then Stephen Queen said, this confirms our experience, as I recall. That's yes. what you said. Okay. The October meeting. None of our, black, our members of color were there. And again, the concern about the police department being unfairly painted as racist was a thread in a, a broader discussion. A broader discussion of the errors in the report. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm almost done. So, well, I don't so like so this interpretation. That I am saying, it. this is what I, you know what, I'm telling you how I, well, how I experienced it, but did I, con did I clearly communicate to the committee that I was uncomfortable with that? No, I'm sorry I didn't. Okay, I was trying to be a team player, so you know, you really have to be careful, and I was not being thoughtful about, but I was feeling that, and I think it was a problem. We were talking about mostly the digestibility of the report, 
the accuracy of the details. And um, but there was that thread, and it was being said. And it's you know, and okay. So at the end, John said, "I feel like you just don't want to release the report because we were talking about it as if we had the authority to do that." Um, and so that was the, there was that feeling, I believe, in the discussion of discomfort. And the only other thing I want to say about it is um, that just that concern, I think, I personally feel was problematical in the context of discussing this data analysis and the summary that we were trying to present of it. Um, I felt, I talked with my friend Bomani, and I felt like, because I rewatched the tape, and it looked different than I remembered it, and I think Dave, in a way, I, I don't think, it, was, it wasn't really so much about Dave. It was, you know, that we were having this discussion as a committee, right? So, but, um, but I thought someone like Bomani, a person of color, would watch that report and have concerns. That's what I thought. So, I just want to say it's something we need to be, I think we should be cognizant of as a committee. Um, and, and, and then beyond that, just in terms of the familial thing, it does complicate to some extent what occurred. But um, I, I mean, you know, Michelle Obama, she's, you know, President Obama, he, you know, I had signs in front of my yard for people. I don't agree that committee members, as a committee, we shouldn't support anybody or not support anybody. But as individuals, to put those kind of constraints, I think it's undemocratic, and I think it's wrong. I think when you know people make errors of how they you know people confront them hopefully some agreement is able to come over time but i think for government to start restricting i'm sorry i'm totally against that i think it's wrong well, we don't have a clear so, guideline do we well, I would there, like is no clear guideline. there is no clear, clear guideline and i you know I'm, but i'm, I'm gonna, so that's it I'm, 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 i want to just you, you said something that I wasn't clear about yeah. what it was. You said if Bumani or a person of color watched Watch the, the video, video of the October meeting. meeting. That was my feeling after. Could you say more about what you think that because, feeling was? Because like you're concerned that they would Because you weren't concerned you weren't talking we weren't talking about I mean we, we were also talking about concerns about the people who are being cited more. But it, it seemed like the greater concern was the concern about the Police being called racist. I disagree. No. I, did, I can't just no. let her just say that because it wasn't true. Well, one of the That's things. I mean, let's check with everyone about whether well, others. So what I what I what's happening in this process is everyone's having a chance to talk about their experience, and so it sounds like her experience is really different than yours, and it's and it's hard to even hear. It's so different, and that that's really. Uh, Frustrating for you that it would that it could be it's very frustrating because Judith put this out at council, which I think was very disrespectful to all of us on this. On this was this, discussed at this council? whole task force. She <laughs> had made this same. Well, all right, start out with who started. Three, two council members reprimanded John. I mean, let's start beginning what happened at the council meeting. I didn't just start talking about this, right? Correct. You did speak. I did speak, yes. and you, uh, yeah, I could go through everything you said, but at some point you said exactly what you just said here, that the reason that we had voted to hold on taking this to the council was because of our anxiety about the, the impact of what I said it was about a, well, I don't know what I said there. I wasn't, I just saw the tape and I wasn't very prepared. I was trying to be clear, but um, I think it was a threat. It's not, I'm not saying it's the main I, reason. I watched I it twice, it. and you actually, said things that were, uh, to me, very offensive in terms of the, this particular body, this task force, and it's because it's a serious concern. It's a very serious concern to say that we see that the police have in the past six years, it was all out of context too. You used the number, you just did it again. John used the number in his post without using the context of what is it we're looking at, how many years, how many people, what are we talking about? You just throw out it's gonna be one point something more times more warnings or more citations and that we had that concern we really had the concern about whether people could understand the report and speaking of the report this task force asked the council to pay for the analysis we owned that report i mean yes it was in the public document but we were not ready to share this report which was not john's but the whole task force we all had this report 
And we kept looking at it and saying there are things we didn't understand. Since that night, John has sent five, six emails about errors. None of those errors really changed the conclusions much, but he at least was pointing them out, which was conscientious. But it points out that we were not clear that this report was ready to go. And it had nothing to do with our fear about... So you didn't hear so anybody raise that question. This is something that you two see really differently. You're saying that... I said it was a threat. You're saying it's a thread it of the conversation, and it's one that ca caused some uncomfortable feelings for you in that meeting. And um, while it wasn't the main thing that was talked about, it was there, and its presence concerned you. And you're saying you don't really see it that way, that that was... I don't see it that way, and I'm offended that you could put that out in the council meeting. And, and that, that the way she put it out to the public at the council I meeting I think it was offensive. Is, I think it's insulted offensive our entire insults, insults, insults the body. This is, this so is, I this was my, this was my statement that they're debating. So if I could address... Well, I feel like other people okay. haven't had a chance to address, and there's three people who haven't had a chance to speak. So I know okay. it's hard to... Speak. I'm just saying that this, that's, there is my statement, and I tried to clarify it and so come I'm back. So I think we, I want to make sure we offer everybody a chance to talk before we run out of time. Okay. So this will be a little, not on this, it is about this topic, but in a broader sense. Um, I was not at the October meeting, so I don't really want to weigh in on that. What I wanted to weigh in on is I've been part of the Human Relations Commission for, I think it's three years now, and this type of thing came up with us, and it was a pretty big deal. Um, uh, Brian Housh wrote up a big, what would we call that? What is that called? A Roll conduct, and roles, and responsibilities. We went over that for months, it seems like. Um, because you have to be very careful with saying that people can't express, have the, fee the freedom of expression. Um, you have to be very careful with that. There was a lot at that time th that was said that community or commission members couldn't have an opinion and on pretty much anything and so we did hash through that a lot and it came down to um, that the commission members need to be very cognizant of what they're discussing so with the human relations commission we did not you know as individuals we were still commission members and I wouldn't discuss things that we would have discussed in one of our meetings or something that we would have some type of influence over um, so I think it's really important to define that instead of just saying that you, you know you have this gag order because that's how it came across back in the human relations it was it was a really big deal and we were basically told I was even shown legal documents that um, that the village council could be sued by something that someone in the commission says and I took offense at that because I didn't feel that I had given up my rights to be, you know, my rights as an American citizen um, just to be on the commission that I volunteer for and give a lot of time to. So I think that it's something that we have to be cognizant of. If it's something that we, we have extra information about, if it's something that we have influence on, if it's something that um, someone's coming to us to get funded, things like that. So I think that that hasn't been specified here in this group. And so I don't, and I also think it hasn't been specified when it comes down to elections and, and how you do that. Because I didn't comment on um, the mayor at all because I felt like that was, and I don't have, I mean I could have honestly done that, but I, and I also make sure when I would comment on things that I don't say, well, I'm a member of HRC or something along those lines. And in fact, when I do comment on stuff, I'm very clear with saying, I'm saying this as a citizen and not as, but then you also don't divulge stuff that you don't know as a commission member. If that makes sense, it seems convoluted. But yeah, <laughs> Steve was there with me. I was going to say the back through and all that. And so, right, it was just like, yeah, make sure yeah. you let people know which hat you're wearing yeah. when you make the an opinion. And that still would bring up, never bring up what's happening in meetings. That was still kind of mm -hmm. the main sort of concern of theirs from the council's position of us was, was just like, and not only not discuss HRC, but if you really do have an opinion, 
it's not HRC, so I'll mention HRC, I'll mm -hmm. mention that. Yeah. And that from there it's fine if you do it. Yeah. You're allowed to have an opinion, you're not censored. You are censored if you are trying to say as a member of blank. Yeah, I it took feel, us a while to get through that. Right, because it was semi really like effective. the opposite when they first told us. It's like, don't go on social media and well, that's it was what it almost was. what it felt like, <laughs> right? That's what it was. Finally, we were able to like really talk to them and go through the legalities of it. Mm -hmm. And it just turns out we can't default it as a member. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Matt, do you, want, you just want to react to Do you want to have a, a firmer statement first? <laughs> I'll, I'll come back to it if there's time, but go ahead. Okay. Um, well, uh, as to whether people have a political voice, I'm pretty sure we all still do, I think it's fine. But I do think people have pointed out some really good limitations on how to use it. My biggest concern, really, with what you did, John, was that, you know, we had this, like, group process going here, and the idea of publicizing the it was obviously a matter of some concern in the group. And I never thought that we weren't going to decide to publicize it. I thought that we were just delaying it because, I mean, somebody like myself, for instance, really had a methodological questions that I wanted to get answered. And I didn't feel like I got them totally answered at the meeting. And I wanted a chance to talk to people who, you know, have a professional background in these statistics. And so, so we had this issue. It was like trying to get comfortable with it. and then. I was certain we were going to publicize it. Uh, and so we had this process, and so you sort of violated that by sort of, you know, jumping into it anyways. And that, that's a problem for a group that wants to have an ongoing process. So um, let me just say this, though. Having had the chance to, you know, talk to people about the methodology and give it to other people, it's a really fine piece of work. It really is. It's really well done. And, uh, and uh, you know, I would be proud put my name on it now, now that I've had a chance to sort of study. And so, you know, like we're all learning as we go through this wonderful little journey here. And, you know, so I, I mean, I think you got impatient is what happened in, in my senses. That that's, that's was my takeaway. You're feeling very impatient. You know, you've been, you've been with this for a while. You're pretty sure about how it went down and the, and the methodology and why is it taking the rest of us so long to get comfortable with it. And, it had the unfortunate effect, now I'm talking just about ethics here, the unfortunate effect of taking something that is just a, it's a good piece of sociological <coughs> study and turning it into more of a politicized thing that it needed to be, more controversial than it needed to be. Uh, I'd rather we be talking about the content of it because I think it's really significant. That's why I wanted to take the time to make sure I understood the methodology because it's a, it's a really important piece of work. It's really good. I think our police department will get a lot of use out of it. So they should. Uh, the community can get a lot of news out of it. So, uh, you know, it just, it's just a chance to learn. Uh, I think you did really fine work on it, and I'm sorry this is sort of blown up around it, uh, because, you know, that's just unfortunate. And it's just the way things happen sometimes. You do something good, and then something bad happens as a result of it. But, uh, you know, I hope it doesn't deter you from going forward doing good stuff. <coughs> Well, I, I haven't been here. Uh, wasn't, I've been traveling a lot lately. Uh, and uh, what I'm hearing here is a couple of things. It, it reminds me of some things when uh, I was out of Cedarville. I remember when, when Barack Obama was first uh, elected back in, what, 2008? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was on duty that night. and. A lot of the uh, minority students were upset because some professors were making comments, white professors were making comments to the minority um, students about if they voted for him, certain things were being said that were very negative. I'm not going to go into here. And so there were some people who were saying that I should st stand up and say something. I should make my voice known. I'm on duty. I'm in uniform. And no matter what I say while I'm in uniform will be interpreted not as Sergeant Randolph, not as Bill Randolph, but as Sergeant Randolph, a representative of the campus police department out there. So I had to really temper that. And sometimes 
That's what wisdom dictates. A lot of times we say, I feel like I want to see this. I feel like I want to see Sometimes that's not, that just because you feel it doesn't mean it should be said. There may be a time it needs to be said. Some things are necessary, but there's also timing that needs to be included as well in when something is being said. But on the other hand, I also listen to everyone here. I can recall that a lot of uh, uh, protocols were established because stuff just fell through the crack. And I think that as, as a body here, we have to remember that what goes on here goes on here. And we got to be careful about releasing. I think that was one of the things that was first uh, 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 said to me about being on this task force. It's in-house. It should stay in-house. And we have to represent, remember who we, we, we're representing. Your, your statement about uh, being a, uh, a government? Uh, yeah. Okay. We, we, yeah, we, we have to be mindful of that because if we step outside of that and say something, then no matter what you may say, you can say, well, I'm Bill Randolph, I'm saying this. You can say it all you want to, but you will still be interpreted as a member of the task force. Okay? Now, uh, we'll, we'll learn from this. We'll learn from this. As long as it doesn't become personal, as long as we keep it professional, and then sometimes, some people just have to have a conversation amongst themselves. Because too many people weighing in on the conversation will pollute the conversation. So we're at a point where we have, where you all have to make some decisions. We have less than 10 minutes left. Probably half of you want to respond to things that have been said. And certainly all will, won't have an opportunity to do that. In, in the time that we have allotted. So I think you have to make a decision um, about what is the, what's the priority, what, what, what do you want to do from here? So I don't know, I think your options are decide to have further discussion outside this meeting. You could change the agenda and decide to continue discussing things now. You could decide that We've done enough talking and we're just going to move on, or any number of things. So I'm wondering where you would like to go from here. Um, uh, well, I know that Cindy wanted to respond, and then I also wanted to respond. So I, I, I Well, I know that the statements that, that Judith and Pat are referencing originated at least in part with me. Um, and me too. Because that. The misinterpretation of raw data giving an impression of the overall police department activity is something that was a concern of mine. I come from a law enforcement criminal justice background. I, that's the way I look at it. You know, Steve, as a, as a person of color, is going to come at it from a different perspective. That doesn't mean I, I negate his experience or I think it's any less. But I think that's why I was put on this task force is because of my background and experience. And I was trying to make sure that those issues were addressed. Um, I don't express myself well verbally. I sent an email two weeks ago trying to, trying to clarify what I intended to say and I didn't do a very good job of publicly. Um, I don't know if that made any difference for Judith's interpretation of what I had to say or not. Um, but I think I think there are there are issues. This this report brings up a lot of things that need to be discussed. I think releasing it in any form to the public and the, the raw data we have was premature. I said that in my statement, and I'm going to stop talking now. If, if I could just say, I was also probably one of those that uh, Judy was talking about of being racist or making racist kind of or block keeping the police department from here getting the data. I, I wanted to publicize it, but I wanted to, I thought the report, I disagree with Elvis complete. I think it is a very, was very poorly done. The biggest mistake we made was, and I applauded John for getting that, that database. It was a one great idea. The mistake was sending it over to Wright State because what they, they did was a, was, a, was a terrible job. The school board on Thursday talked about how what a shoddy job one board member talked about what a shoddy job they did on that uh, Wright State did on survey, that uh, survey, survey. Uh, so 
what we should have kept it within this group, within Yellow Springs, to do the analysis, because there are all kinds of problems with that. And just putting 1.46 based on a seven-year period uh, without any further thing is, uh, is not giving the police department any valuable information. Well, it does give them a little bit of information, but I, I would be, I was a little surprised it wasn't more than 1.46. I mean, if, if, if I know I am wired, my, my brain is racist wired, but I think I've made compensating mechanisms to overcome that. And I think the police department is, is making some efforts too. So, uh, uh, it's, Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, regarding that we voted not to release the report, um, just to, I guess I probably shouldn't even say this is sort of a nuanced point. We didn't actually vote not to release it. Like, I actually tried to, to vote against it, but no, no vote was taken, so I, I didn't actually have that opportunity. <laughs> um, because <laughs> no, no vote was taken on the question. Um, but, and basically, my underlying view of the, the whole time was that we didn't have um, a right to make a decision on whether or not to release it, which is why I made the motion to um, determine, to basically find the summary to be an accurate reflection of the report, because I didn't want to make a motion for us to release it, because that seemed inherently problematic. Um, so, um, just to make a distinction between me and Comey, uh, Justice Department has rules that you don't talk about, like investigations, because that especially when you determine that you're not going to press charges, um, versus uh, this report was based on publicly accessible data that anyone could have requested. Um, and it's my understanding of Sunshine Law that basically the report at every stage of drafting and all of the correspondence between me and the consultant um, and other committee members on the issue were public records and that basically it's not an issue of national security and that it was public at every stage of drafting. Um, I mean, that said, I mean, like, I think it's important that we put our official stamp on something that's, that's good. Um, it's not like we, that there's no point in putting an official stamp on things that are better. Um, with regard to the post, uh, I wasn't, it was intended to be narrowly tailored to, like, from what I saw at this meeting, my view is that the candidate has a disposition that leads me to believe that you should, for these reasons, vote for him, versus feeling impatient that the report wasn't being released and trying to say, that this report is being withheld and you need to like riot to get it released. I mean, I could have just released the report then. And in fact, in the comment thread, no one is saying anything about JSTF and no one is saying, where's the report? What do we need to do to get it released? Um, so my sense is that people didn't necessarily interpret it that way. I could be wrong. Um, once again, I feel like, or I guess that happens with this. I apologize that the post was not as nuanced as it could have been, I was trying to keep it short because that's what social media likes. Um, and so I feel like I could use enough words to cover all the various nuances. And I felt like that would sort of detract from the intentional, from the intention which was just to be about the election rather than about JSDF. Um, I don't see this as being related to my mother at all. Uh, yeah, she didn't encourage me to do this whatsoever. Yeah, no. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but that's all right. Can I say one more thing about the report? We, we, this uh, task force created a process. In fact, John helped us do it, a checklist of how an issue comes forward. We agree to work on it. We agree to go forward. We decide who's going to do it, then that person brings material back to the committee. We did this with, with the data project. We did this. Yeah. We did all of this. 
And, and then we had supported you tremendously in terms of saying, oh, we need to pay for somebody to help with this, that we brought in citizens who were willing to help. I mean, we gave a lot of support to you. And the anticipation was then we get reports back, and then we review them, and then we agree what we have, that we'll take them to council. I mean, we have a process. And I think that one problem was that you, and then Judith and council, took some piece of this completely out of context, which had not been agreed upon by this group. I mean, I think when you put one point whatever, it doesn't talk about the six, seven years, it doesn't, you know. So I think that that, um, what that, the learning from that is just to reinforce that even if one person is on the team share of the work and the hard work, um, and, you know, corrected errors, he's kept on top of it for weeks now, um, no matter what, it belongs to the task force. It's not one person's. That's not John's report. Yeah. And other things that we've done, that each of us have done, they're not our individual thing to put out to people. They belong to the whole task force. Yeah. And we didn't complete our process. You brought, we brought in that, that paid for uh, piece. You agreed to do an analysis. I agreed to do a cover page. We set, we, we had things in motion. We will do this, this, and this, and then we'll take it to council. And I think that was a mistake for us to, for, a mistake for you to interrupt it. And I think that we, you know, we need to reassert that when we're working on something, it is a, it belongs to all of us, and we have to have some consensus about what, what it is and when it goes to council. Uh, okay, so yeah, so I'm sorry, I remember what, what I forgot to say. Thank you, Pat. Um, so this is what I was trying to say about like, you know, technical committee hat versus like critical activist view, journalist hat. So. As I didn't see myself as acting as like data analysis project head when I was releasing this. Whenever I've talked to anyone about this report, I always underline that it's public, and if they want it, they can request it. Um, just like this is why I won't be doing sort of critical. I will, I will I will keep it separated by just not doing this part, at least in relation to task force work at all. Um, so. It's like, on the one hand, I disagree with some people's reading of like what the limitations on our work is in like principle, but then I also like recognize the political climate, and so those disc that debate is like hypothetical. Yeah, you're still certain Reddit. So okay, so there's so the uh, process for developing recommendations I don't think uh, is relevant to. Um, in fact, there's a cutout there for for pure research. It's only for. Um, for policy recommendations. Wow. I, I, I disagree entirely. Right. So, as well as, like, I wasn't acting as a committee person, so I wouldn't be following. Would you like me to read your those, statement on those Facebook? Recommendations anyway. So, I'm, I mean, you, you have to make some choices at this point. We, um, and I, and, and it's, it, it sounds like there's still lots of disagreement and a, a lot of people who are upset about things. And so, before we talk any more about the content, it seems like you have to decide what you want to do. Can you go on with the meeting in the state that we are in now? If not, what are your other choices? Can we go on with the uh, with this ta task force? I question whether we can continue even with the task force. It's it's caused enough that it's concerned about how the task force can continue to work together. It has also put in the public eye. It has put this task force in a very unfair position. Um, as individual members and as a group. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate that people may feel that way. I certainly don't feel that way. I mean, you know, it's like we're all people growing up trying to learn how to work together in a context like this and in a, the environment that we live in. And, you know, I mean, let's just learn from this and move forward. And I thought this was a really interesting conversation. I don't feel like we have a, a great resolution, but we've certainly surfaced the issues. We know what they are. I don't see a reason why can't keep working together and and like I, I tried to say I think this is a valuable piece of research I'd actually like us tonight to get on to talking about whether we're ready to start you know to actively publicize it but of course you know that's just my feeling unless the group shares that feeling we've got to you know, address people's concerns well I guess I'll put out are there people who would be interested in having some kind of restorative justice process with Jen 
given the discussion here tonight, I don't see that there would be much point. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't say I'm not interested. I don't think there would be much point. I think that the What's disagreement the and the distinctions between real fact and, and other persons, uh, different versions of reality, I don't see that there so would be So it feels like you're too far apart yes. to have, that having another discussion in a different format wouldn't wouldn't change I don't the, see the, but then the, I'm the space between a pessimist by nature. So okay. I've been proven wrong before. So you're not super hopeful about a process. There you go. That's what you're saying, as opposed to I will or I won't. You're right. sort of acknowledging that it doesn't seem like, hey, let's do a process. Right. Okay. I don't know if other people want to respond to Marion's question. I think we're talking about several different things at once, which is usually the case, and that's problematic because you can't resolve any of them. You're talking about all of them at the right. same time. We're talking a lot about the report and the process and the, and the commission and whether or not the rules say you may or may not do this. And then, I mean, that's a sort of legalistic kind of thing. There are social contracts that, though they're not legally binding, are also very important. Uh, a very wise woman once said in a, in a meeting years ago that I was in when we were trying, the whole group of 30-some people was trying to come to a decision, and two people said, we're going to stop this because we don't want it to happen. And, and the guy said, I've got Robert's Rules of Orders right here. And it's one of, one of those, you know, knitting, not saying much, but saying something wise while not looking up, said, you know, the rules are there as guidelines to follow and you know what the right thing to do is. And I think that a lot of this centers on what's the right thing to do in a circumstance? Or conversely, what's the wrong thing that has been done or the wrong thing to do? And the feelings about the wrong things being done are getting in the way of talking about where to go from here. And I think that that would have to be dealt with first for a lot of people. I'm trying very hard to separate my feelings about me in this from the task force. And I'm going to continue to try and do that. It's becoming more difficult, but I'm going to continue to try and do that. Because I think the task force and our work is more important. But I don't see a coming together on enough things for us to be able to continue to work together until we resolve that social contract aspect of it. I would second Dave's statement. So what's your suggestion about how to do that? I'm talking as much as I feel safe and then shutting up. So I've got, to, I've got to build up another reservoir, you know, feeling like I'm going to not talk too much. Because I'm a little good at that. I'm not many other things. I mean, it's, it sounds like you just had a, it's just, the, the, there's some level of reality, but this is just really difficult. I mean, it's, it's impacted, I mean, I think you categorize it well. There's this sense of, like, what's the proper thing to do procedurally, but there's also this social contract in the sense of how, the, how you all work together. That's been, <coughs> in some people's mind, violated, in other people's mind, maybe not. And what is that? Those differences are maybe feel really far apart at this point. And um, that has, and the, the um, sort of, maybe snowballs too strong, but the ripple, maybe ripples better, the ripple effects from the initial Facebook post and then what happened at council and what's happened between and, and the challenges that um, sort of sit with each of you, you've, sh you've been able to share some of those, the concerns about how you're, you're perceived, how the group is perceived, how um, communications have, when you've tried, it sounds like some of you have tried to say some things about this and maybe it didn't come out the way that was as clear as you wanted to and that that adds to the ongoing challenges. Um, that uh, it, there's some yeah. concerns about then where, what's, What's next for you? And I know that maybe is the hard question to answer because I've asked it in the one's answer. Yeah. Um, well, I was just clearly cle cle different. Uh, we each have our own experience going yeah. on here. Mm -hmm. And some people, uh, like Atlas, are like, hey, whatever. Not exactly, but that's sort of where you are. Well, I don't know if I'm flattered or I am. And other people uh, are power that you know, not. That's and good. I'm somewhere in the middle. But it just occurred to me, like, of to each of us to think like what do I need what do I I need to be able to continue working in this way mm -hmm. maybe that's not something each of us knows right now mm -hmm. but uh, I thought I was wondering if that might be
be a good question for each person to ask themselves. And I don't know if that's something to address right now. But, well, you know. I would like to say something, thinking about the restorative justice, uh, an email that I got about an, an event that you know I went to a week or so ago. It had something interesting in it. And, and said, I'm sorry is an apology. I'll never do it again as a promise. What can I do to make it up to you is works toward I don't remember the phrase, but it was sort of working towards restoration. Yeah. I'm not hearing that. No, I don't yeah. Right. I'm not hearing any of those things. Not even just the apology. And again, the social contract is has been breached. There is ways for various people, but we have to work together as a group. And until that social contract gets repaired, or at least is acknowledged to have been breached, I don't think that there's a cost in a social, the restorative justice probably won't work. Not that I don't think it's a good idea, because I suggested it to Marianne several days ago. Well, I'm curious why that's, how, that's what you heard, because I thought I heard John say that this was something that he would not repeat, like if he had the high. I thought I heard that's what he said, that he would be separate from, you know, himself as an activist or whatever, and that having done this and looking back on it, it's not something that he would choose to repeat. I think mean, that's what I heard. And that is what you're saying. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that's when you, when, you, when you were talking about this idea of, you know, your activist hat and your task force hat, that at this point, it sounds like you're saying I would, yeah. that you can't really wear the activist hat around task force issues while you're on the task force. Correct. It doesn't, it does not, you realize, you've become very clear that that's not working right. and that that's not something you want to, that you've decided yes. that that's what you need to do going forward. Right. I mean, I, that's what I hear. We all com communicate in very different ways. I think we should also take that into account as well. I mean, we all have different communication styles. John has a different communication style than, than I do, and so sometimes I have to really um, hear what he's saying, you know, in a different way. And I think Ellis and I have different communication styles. I mean, it's just, um, that was just what I heard. I, I don't know that it sounded like an apology that you think of as one. That's what the apology was based on. It was, I wouldn't do it again because it caused problems. It's not, the things I said were incorrect, they were misrepresented, and they were inflammatory. And they hurt. And, and they hurt a lot of people, and I should not have said them. That, that was not even a remotely addressed. No. So you're saying that's what your concern is, is that, that the statements in your, from what you're saying aren't true, and they hurt somebody, I th missed the third one, that you that you said, I'm sorry. But that that's, that's it. it. Yeah, that they okay. yeah. But that's and that Allie agreed with that. I've been married thirty long time. Thirty six years, thirty seven. A long time. And for those of you who have been married for a long time, or a short time even, you know that Sometimes you take some crap, sometimes you dish it out. And within the first few weeks of my wife getting and I getting together many decades ago, we talked about how we work things out in the relationship. And we agreed that the key to having an argument, having a fight, is not to win, but to work it out and stay together afterwards. And we've been successful at that. And sometimes it's been hard, and sometimes it's been easy. It's real easy to have fun with somebody. It's hard to have a fight. If you don't go into it wanting to work things out, and I agree about the listening part, but you have to both listen and respond to what you hear. Uh, and that give and take is important. And again, I'm not feeling it. And I, and I would, now I will make it personal just a little bit. David Turner stated that Justice System Task Force at the, meetings, at the meetings should not make the Republic public because it would result in incidents accusing a police department of being racist. I did not say that. At this time, and in this community, and on this task force, I find that incendiary. 
and I find it extremely offensive, and I, I find it a complete misrepresentation of me as a person and my work in this community. And it really makes me angry when I hear things like that. I have a reputation in this community as a nice guy. I work for many of you in your houses, fix things for you, people like me. I do good things. I shouldn't have to sit here and defend myself against this. David Turner, it revealed Turner's willingness to undermine a central aspect of the task force mission. Undermine the task force mission? Good Lord, that's awful. That's a terrible thing to say. And that is not my intent. I have never behaved like that, and I shouldn't have to publicly put up with that or privately. And that pisses me off. So, that's how I feel. And I don't feel heard by you or others in some cases to some extent. I feel heard and supported by a lot of people in this community. But that's what's going on here for me personally. And I know that there are a lot of people in this community who are supportive of me. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people in this community that are supportive of you. But here we are. And if we are going to work together as a group, we're going to have to get past that for the group. Because not only have you personally said things about me, but you've implied things about the group. And you've hurt all of these people one way or another. And you are not taking responsibility for it. You've got to grow up. And David, it sounds like you know, you said that these statements are false and it, it, I mean, it pisses you off. That, that it's damaging out there. publicly. It might even affect my business. And it's, it's defamatory. And it's also affecting the, the reputation of the whole group, too. And that that's what is, makes this so frustrating. And, and you're not hearing from John what you need right. to make this right. Nothing. Right. Nothing. And I don't have to talk to you ever again, publicly or privately. You need to fix what's going on in this group that you caused. You need to accept it publicly and do it. Even if you don't mean it, you have to act like it. I need to take a walk and calm down. The statement that is wrongly attributed to David in that was probably the taken out of context and misrep misrepresented statement that I made about the data being presented the data misrepresenting the police department. So mm -hmm. I take this very personally as well. As a task force member and as an individual who feels that this is a place where we are supposed to be discussing these things and working these issues out for the betterment of the community, and if my words are going to be misrepresented and warped and taken out of context, then I'm hesitant to talk about things in this group that need to be discussed. So that's a concern for you, yes. that how it affects your ability to speak freely in, in the conversations. Yes. And it probably is, uh, I was also probably guilty of, of what, just what she said too. I, I'm also not, I mean, Dave has left, he needs a break. I'm not sure what we should talk about without him. I mean, I'm not, I don't know if other people need a break. I guess I sort of feel like I need to check in about my comfort about c continuing on without him here. He's, here. He's back. He's back. Yeah. That was long, so just long enough to make that. <laughs> well, I guess I'm curious, John. Do you, do you, you clearly are hearing what they're saying. Are you getting it? Do you uh, get why they would feel the way he feels, given what you said? Yes, and I mean, certainly any. I apologize for, for any impacts. I mean, obviously, as I, as I said, my, the, the impetus for this was the election. It, it wasn't to impact David's reputation, his business. How can you even no. say that? So what you're you're saying you were your intention wasn't to harm David personally. I don't know if that's the best way to say it. Yeah, your exactly. concern was about the right. election. I mean, honestly, right? Exactly. I mean, I was imagining expressing these concerns after the election, and people being like, "Well, why didn't you say something?" Prior to it, basically. So you you had this dilemma where you were concerned if people knew you had these concerns before the election and hadn't spoken about them that that 
that that would have caused frustration or upset from people in the community? Uh, I mean, yes, mm -hmm. and and someone just felt responsible for for yeah for expressing them for sure. Felt obliged. Um, I'm sorry. Prime. Uh, stress levels high. So I'm like yeah. forgetting what else. Yeah. People are accusing you of lying. Ah. Okay. So um, didn't want to get into the the hairy details of interpretation here. Um, there was a point. It's possible that I misremembered things in the September meeting. We, uh, it wasn't recorded, so there's. Uh, no way to say. Um, with regard to the October meeting, um, and you know, I didn't have a chance to review the, the tape before that, before posting that. But uh, there was a point where um, David said, "You know, I find this, um, you know, very complicated. Uh, it shouldn't be more than." more than one page and you know I feel like the main usefulness of this is to teach us how to do data analysis in the future. I feel like if we release this, um, all the people are going to get out of it is, you know, black residents, uh, that their odds of being cited are 1.47 times that of white residents. Um, and you know, I guess I heard that in a particular way. Um, I mean, to a certain extent, as I said, I was trying to express concerns about a particular disposition and imagining how that would carry over into um, council work. But, like, I, I guess, like, I don't. I believed that what I said was true. I still believe that what I said was true. Don't believe that what I said was useful. Um, and nor do I believe that it was properly my role to sort of play that play that part. So that's something that is still seen really differently. That mm -hmm. you're you're you don't feel like you were lying right. in your post and that that's something that, that a few people have said they see strongly too. Yeah, I wanna say that um, I believe that there that thread was actually significant, that worry about the police being thought of as racist. I thought people were, there was a significant concern being expressed. There was. And I think that when I started thinking about a person of color seeing a group who's supposed to just, you know, we were thinking about how we were going to summarize this, it raised concerns for me. What I feel like, unfortunately, I wasn't clear enough about, and I do think it was partly, you know, I'm council uh, liaison. I can play a heavier role here and in a committee. I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to be part of the team and all of that. And so, so, you know, I, and I felt like that conversation should stop. I felt like that conversation would, would, um, if, if it became public, that it would undermine the credibility of the, of the task force. That is what I thought. Do I think that Cindy's a bad person? No. I think she's. I like Cynthia, I think she's a good person. I think everybody on this committee is a good person. I think Dave is a good person. All our intentions are to do good for the village. I never called anybody a racist. I never call people, white people racist. Why would I do that? Because we all struggle with racism. And it's just ridiculous for one person to be slinging mud like that against another white person. I think it's, it's, it's totally makes it difficult for people to deal with racism. <laughs> So I never do that. I was not thinking we're all racist. All us white people are racist. Um, I was thinking that there was a, uh, because we are white, a lack, of sen a lack of sensitivity to the way that would look. And the way that would look, could look, to a person of color, that concern. So you had those concerns in that meeting. I, did. I had that concern in the September meeting. In fact, I remember, but I'm sure I don't remember it correctly because I don't have that great of a memory, but I thought David said, oh great, something like this. You know, like he was upset that these were the results and then it would look at me and people would open the newspaper or something like that and just all they would see is our, our police department's racist. 
And there was, I had a sense because I, I said a couple of times, are you kidding? We are releasing this report. I thought there was a conversation happening in this room where people were sort of arguing against releasing it, even though we didn't even actually have the authority to decide that. So that is what I was hearing. So I don't think, and I don't think I'm hearing that because I'm John's mother, you know. I think I'm hearing that, I was hearing that because I think it was part of the conversation, and to the extent that people are acting like it isn't, I think that is true, untrue. Um, and I think that's untrue. I mean, I I thought, in, fact, in fact, I thought at one point, I thought Pat, I thought, you know, because we were all sitting on this end, I had some sense that I thought we kind of were all feeling that a little bit, but you know, you know how, so that's what I thought. And, and, I, I have a totally different perception. I don't need to I, go into it because I've already put it out there. So the, I mean, so this is uh, Steve's been waiting to talk. No, just <clears throat> what somebody asked me about John's thing. Basically, I just put it down as the numbers are going to speak for themselves. Too. They're not going to be able to. No matter what math is done, they, they're still going to say it's still going to show up that the Wise Police Department has been racist in the past. I, it's just. Uh, the concept of that, just put it out there earlier than it was going to happen, I'm not sure what they're waiting on. It doesn't bother me because it's one of those, it was like when, you know, it's like, hey, we need to do this investigation on whether the police acted incorrectly in New York City. It's like, yeah, fine, fine, it takes too much to show what I can tell you that night. So it's just like, to me, it was just a, okay, fine, if somebody needs to get more proof that police departments are racist, give it to them. I just, I don't think that the outcome is still going to be the same. The numbers have shown it. And so I'd see his concern, I wouldn't have done what he did, but I see his concern, the concern is there, of why people are so afraid to just admit that, you know, police departments, even as nice, in a place as nice as this, can have this issue. It's an issue that is faced. I think the police department is working so, on it. I think our job here is to work on it as well. I mean, um, but at the same time, like this sort of concept, or, there seems to be this like, oh my God, why would these people say that? And it's like, who cares? The numbers have already come out. The data's out there. So that yeah, so like I really, it just felt like that's why I felt it was malicious because it felt like they're not even really talking about the racial aspects of it anymore. It's now just become. A uh, personal attack because if it really became about a race thing, I think that would have been brought up more than someone not you being concerned about someone in this election. I, it's like uh, the racial thing I think needs to be talked about more. Um, but the data was there, so I was never worried that that data was going to get lost. Like I said, there's no math. But it that is, you can been. see that it's a serious uh, conclusion. I mean, it will affect people in the community and the police department. Right, and someone's still going to, even with yeah. data but that's there, they're still going to say it. So right. my thing is, so no more than people had to hear what happened by an investigation on New Year's Eve. It's, it's a very similar thing. The police no department one, No one will be shocked been, by it, but we do want to there say will that be exactly. People absolutely shocked by it. And in private industry, yes, there's, there's always people who just, there are people in this town who believe that there's never experienced racism or anything. They really believe that, and it's that. I know that may sound weird, but there, that is definitely a thought here that that no black person here is raised here has ever experienced it. And I'm just saying that it's uh, that yeah, people are going to push it back, but the numbers are there, so I don't really under. If the numbers are all accurate, that was well, the point. Have we corrected all the errors? Have we? Right. Given the context. The other thing is, there's too many other stories and the people that know for a fact. It's not like. I don't need any numbers to be any more accurate than the ones given. It, it, the truth is there because I know it's there because I've experienced it. So whatever numbers people may switch, it's just like there are just flat raw numbers that, that you can get that are there. I don't uh, think anyone here was disputing, those. I don't think anyone on this task force is disputing the, the, the numbers that there's an issue. Right. With with racial disparity treatment in the police department, that's never been. I certainly never. Well, intended I'm basically to agreeing it. with Ellison that there was a rush to that there was just like a if people are saying that they need more information than they need it, I'm used to hearing that. Oh, you know, I need more detail about how he shot him. 
was he really reaching for something? And so I'm very used to, yes, of course we need more information, because you know, the cop, you still got to give them the biggest benefit of the doubt ever. I just, and so it's just like, fine, I just, I'm very used to that. So I'm, I'm with you on just, the, there was a rush to, um, I think there was a rush to say like, here's what they're trying not to let happen. And I don't think that that's necessarily what they're doing. It feels that way, but it's one of those like, fine, get all the facts out there if that's something that needs to be done. And because uh, I do feel like the numbers said something. I, could it be more detailed? Could it be better explained? Fine. Uh, but it did feel like when it was said um, by anyone saying that, that it was that it felt like there was some pressure to um, make sure you can explain it in a better way than the truth being that the, the YSPD has been racist in the past. And it's like, if you just want to change the definition, that's one thing. But it did sound like the numbers somehow weren't, weren't absolutely correct, even though they were given directly from the police department. So I can understand the concept of, it, it, of uh, hey, like, from my perspective, that's, that is what it sounded like. It sounded like you were trying to tell me that these numbers in front of us that are proof and confirmation that people have been saying for years this has been an issue. It was like, I, so the wording I feel got wrong somehow. And, and which, that's why I, whether that's it's why a I definition email, thing or a number thing, somehow it did feel like people were curtailing a, the whole process of like, this information has to reach the public. Do we need to better define it? That's one thing. But if you're telling me that the numbers could be done better to give a better uh, depiction, well, now I feel like you're trying to change the numbers of the role. And, and I had a feeling that I had, I was not making myself clear, which is why I, why I wrote the email I did, mm -hmm. to try to clarify that. But oh, it, it, that's not even the issue now. The, the, the report itself, the, the contents of the report are not the issue. So the, can I, please? So, so what I'm seeing is that one of the issues is that at the October meeting, there was at least some people, John and Judith, that had concerns about some of the conversation, directly or indirectly, um, in, uh, not um, putting people of color first in the information. It and started it, in September, because I do remember these statements as well. And that that was something you also, I, I at least heard from Judith, didn't have a clear way of expressing to the group. Yeah. And, it's, and it seems like uh, that that's an issue that the group has to consider. When someone has a concern that's hard to bring up, maybe because it, people are going to feel accused or because it's really a difficult issue to bring up, like questions of racism or race, uh, not necessarily accusing anyone of that, but like, how do you bring that up in a meeting when uh, you're when when that's a hard thing to do? And that's something that it seems like an issue. I mean, you've brought up a few things that you need to address as a group, and that's one of them. How do you make room for that? That bringing up challenging concerns. Uh, I'm going to see if I can. Can I just up. end really quickly on? I do want to make sure that, and so because I've seen that process so often. I never took that to be a racist sentiment, as much as that's now part of the process. I mean, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone gets shot, you can see it, but there's the process. Yeah. And to me, that was just something where it's just like, if we can get better data, I didn't take it to mean that it would be against the police as much as like, I don't know, when I heard, when I heard it being said and being discussed, I didn't hear it. Uh, I didn't hear it as a sort of like, because we're afraid that that's going to be. It's just one of those, we could either better prove it or give better numbers to show it. You're talking about September meeting because you weren't Yeah, I'm talking about the September meeting. When I first heard them say, you weren't here at the last meeting. Yeah, yeah. Correct. He's talking about, but in September, September yeah. this conversation started. We had the same thing And it was the exact same issue. Yeah. It was. Of, well, these numbers accurately depict it. And I still don't believe you can move the, you know, the numbers can change any drastically. 
but I didn't take anybody who was saying we need more data or anything to be racist or coming from a racist aspect. That was the one thing in there that I thought was a leap in in uh, interpretation or assumption that it was just it just becomes this part of a process, but you can't disprove it. So there's no. That's where I wanted to really. I know John really wants to say something. I'm, I'm, I, I also feel like we've gone 30, 20, I don't know, a bunch of minutes over. Um, I feel like that those val minutes seemed fairly valuable. I don't know if they were for everyone. I think that um, um, there's still some strong things that people see totally differently, and that that has, it, and that's where, I mean, that, and that's, out there, but it's not addressed or resolved. You know, there's people who who see this experience totally differently, and that that's still there. Um, there's some practical things that people have brought up about, like what do we do to make sure task force members know their role in the political process, and some experience from HRC that may be useful for that going forward. There's um, a suggestion about a further process um, with Jennifer uh, uh, Berman, Berman um, doing. Uh, a restorative sort of justice process at some point, um, and so at this point, I, my my sense as a facilitator is we is that before we can have any more content, you have to really decide. It's not an easy decision; it's a hard decision. But do do you, do you need to move on to your other agenda items? And there's not time. There's not time. Okay. okay, I didn't know how long we went. And so, how much time do we have left? And what do you want to do with that time? So typically we go an hour and a half. Okay. Is that sort of what we aim for? We usually two. go until nine. Nine. Not twelve. Nine. Right. So two hours. So and I think it, it respects everybody's time to try to stick to that if we can. Right. Uh, maybe could we focus just spend the last ten minutes talking about how to move forward to mm -hmm. get through this issue? I mean, I agree with you. I think the time is well spent, and it'd be crazy to try to, to deal with the actual report tonight. So if we just focus on how to move forward to, to get to a place where we all feel comfortable continuing to and I, and I just want to acknowledge, like, that may be hard to answer at this moment because maybe you feel like there's nothing that can help you <laughs> because you're very upset about what's been said still. And I just want to acknowledge that that is, you, people may ask, need time to figure out what they need. There may be nothing that can fix this. I, that sounds really pessimistic. I don't mean to say it as a, I, I'm saying it's, I think it's, to, it's okay if your answer is not an easy answer, if you want to say what you need. Um, Wait, so, uh, uh, so um, as a result of this hubbub, the uh, director of the um, Red State University's statistics program um, offered to do some more analysis to hopefully per, um, further improve the report. Um, I think so in my view, it's, it's, I mean, all of it's public, and basically he can do it outside of our auspices. But I, I guess the question of whether he's formally affiliated with us is, is a task force My um, feedback to you on that issue was that I thought the committee should at least consider, is that useful for us at this point in time to go into another leap of analysis when we haven't, can, can we come to completion on this and then possibly invite him to do that? It's not really separate. Like it would be on exactly the same research. But we have enough. We have under, more than enough. Under analysis. We have way more than enough. Okay. So well, I think it, let's it, complete. So I'd like to, just because I've been part of the Beth, team. Let's introduce yourself. Okay. I'm Beth Crandall, and I've worked with Pat and John on this data analysis um, effort. Um, and so I guess what I want to say about this is. Part of what I've seen you all struggle with is a lot of really dense mathematical statistical language and statistical tests that you're not used to looking at in the report from Wright State. And our effort, my effort, has been to be a translator. And can I take that really dense report and and restructure it and provide information that you find useful and would uh, think is good enough to pass along to council. Now I've written three versions 
and that doesn't even count all the drafts. And each time it's been like, I, less numbers, more numbers, more tests, more. Um, so I really have two things to say. One of them is, given John's post, I think there are people in the community, he pulled one stat out of, and it was a, it's the stat that's in the report, but it's only one stat of a bunch of stats that are in that report, and put it out in public. So now you have the Yellow Springs community without the information that you all have. And in the absence of information, people start to fill in the blanks exactly. on their own. So my recommendation has been get something out. It can be really simple and short, but provide something. So that's one thing. And the other thing is I think it's wonderful that Dr. Trepley, Tarpey, 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 Tarpey. Tarpey. Um, who has great credentials, is offering to do more analysis, but you all are struggling to deal with the analysis they've already done, which are two kinds of tests. He wants to do a Poisson regression. <laughs> now, if you're struggling with what we've already got, what are you going to do with the results of a Poisson regression? I don't, get, think it's I, going to, regression. <laughs> I don't think it's going to move things along. I agree. So, that, so one of the things what I that say. could be on the table about how to move forward is, is, is a discussion about the timeline for getting back to the work. Or, I, because it absolutely. sounds like your concern that you're expressing is that waiting, keeping this void open longer is, is definitely not. I think the, it adds to toxicity. Yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 I just release, want to give I know out. We released the report with Pat's uh, inter, introduction. Sure and uh, publicize it and um, well, I'm not I don't know if we're ready for that but I just want well, to say that for funny. everyone to take home and read because we haven't had a chance at this there are there's a three page summary that Beth has mostly taken from work John's work and some of my narrative and that's a very good I think it's an yeah, excellent so cover sheet better. and then it's very and simple. it has no numbers very few, very few. and then John no. has done mm -hmm. it I don't think we have it yet. Yeah. It's, in, it's not in, nothing that I sent you guys is in this packet. Okay. So John has yeah. said it's that. in your email. Correct. You guys want to say that? Right? Well, <laughs> no, no, that's not <laughs> yeah. Even, even, the, even the updated report where I switched out to odds ratios for risk ratios, because they're more intuitive, um, aren't, in, aren't in here. So the, I would say the question in terms of the report process, and John, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we have this very simple cover page which people could really understand, it has the context, it has whatever. Then John has made a more complete executive summary, summary yeah. taken the most important things out of the report. And that's uh, at another level of technical detail, which would take some thought and consideration to really get through. And then the third thing is the report, the corrective report, which is even denser and thicker. So we have these three things. And then we have to choose as a task force which or all of these things we give out. I would also make a suggestion just for the public, a some, something to compare it to. Because it's like, I'll sit here and say, yeah, oh my god, look at this. Like <clears throat> Yellow Springs in the past six years have done these, but it's just like, but in comparison to Zinio, this is the Yellow Springs actually looks like it's a really nice, safe place to, to go as a person. So, is there is there a way to find some other small town, maybe not even a, or a larger town, or whatever, but to pack numbers against? Because the other thing about numbers is unless there's any sort of way to go. All right, so this is happening in Yellow Springs. So like, does that make us any better or, or worse than Xenia? Like, I feel like, uh, I know that that's going to be the first question, because that you was, need, that was greater contact. one of the questions that came up well, immediately was, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And it was like pulled over and so they're like, well, in the context of what? like. So what about Fairborn then? Like, am I safer to go around Yellow Springs or drive through it? And I, actually, I was like, I don't know. I can't tell you about that one step. And so I was 
just that was one thing that also came up I wanted to bring up when we were going to bring up any ways of the uh, the stats and numbers and what's going to be released of Yellow Springs. Um, are there is there a way to find numbers to sort of go? Oh, okay, like on a report card level, we're at a B or we're at a D. Okay, you, know, you know what I, I mean? I think that's a good idea, but I think we're at the point as Beth has said where we have something that's kind of thrown out there, so we have people waiting to. Right. No, I get it. We need more information, need but I really think it would help the public, myself yeah, included. Correct. It, right. If something else would just go, but it so I think so. Have time for it. Well, so let, let's. No, why don't we briefly address the website of what other numbers are? I don't. It doesn't yeah. have let, to let's be address our numbers. the question because it seems like people are sort of accepting the idea that Beth raised that the numbers are out there, so it's important that we get the report right. out there as well. I mean, I'm. I see heads nodding, so that's, there seems to be some acceptance of that idea. So how do we get from where we are today to the place where we feel comfortable actually? And it sounds like it's something we'd like to do, it, you know, sooner rather. Do we want right. something released between the meetings? Is, I mean, I, I think that's that's, that's, the the that's my question. The report. I mean, I think I'm sure there's little details and uh, that could be changed a little bit. It's not going to change the report that much. And so, I would make a motion that. I mean, I'm wondering. Actually, I've asked of the three pieces, which of I mean, I guess the question is your summary. I'm wondering if Beth and you, and I don't know if you're willing to work with John, but if you guys could to the summary. I mean, we I did wanted, it. We did it's done. This is I know. That's what we did in our paper that was derailed. That's, no, that's, so I'm that's wondering, right. should we go ahead and just have it released? Can we just make a decision? Yeah. I mean, do you feel like it's ready? Well, I don't know, John. Which one? So, so my right. in between one, we got solution data, so is course. basically, and, and it might strike you at first that this would be unnecessary, but basically ask the clerk that when people request the report, um, that, that, that basically she just provides them with the most recent draft of Wright State's report, um, Beth and Pat's summary, my extended summary, my correction, and I guess that would be it. And then, That's a lot. Is that but yeah, but I mean, this is for people that are requesting. We're requesting. I mean, who's, ordinary people don't request documents from the clerk, but for people that do request, for people, if someone wanted, if right. you're, I mean, basically you guys are like, well, but if it, they're floating out there and then people are filling in the blanks, well, for the people that are really dying for the numbers, well, they, they're I'd like them. to suggest that the committee take the three-page report that I just fed with the primary yeah. It, it's the work of all three of us. Okay, the, the three of you it's may change it from a draft to right. final. Yes. Then if the council say, this data is very difficult, we're still working on things, but, but have a pile of everything you're working on, right. send that in the council pack, not, not hard copy, but um, electronic, and then Judy has it. Because I'll tell you, every time someone makes a public document request, it's hours and hours of her time. So I think you might as well put it all together right. so she can yeah. just send it off to someone rather than making her right. spend needless hours. Was that emotional? And, and I would, by the way, um, get the errors that I found last night corrected, of course. Right. Which I got to check on that. I like the question, John. This one and this one and what else? Uh, and so basically it's not in there. This is the original stuff in here. Sent, but it was not. Uh, yeah, I didn't make sure. Yeah, and basically this, except for the risk ratios, and yeah, and so with the errors corrected. This. Well, the basically, basically this is, oh, this I'm is sorry, the red states report. Yeah, that and this, this is what we wanted to have. And this is what we wanted to have. Yeah, exactly. So these two red states report corrected and my correction because they're not going to correct it. So it sounds like later. Ellis wants to make sure he knows what the papers are Yeah, yeah that's what I'm, did, some oh, I'm say, sorry, yes. Say what they the JSTF the extended data analysis summary by me, <coughs> the Yellow Springs JSTF data analysis of police and oh, police warnings, which is and one citation is three page by Pat and Beth. Right, okay. Mike Bottomley's report except corrected. Which will be dated now. Which will be dated in the future. Okay, so it's not the November 6th one, it'll have a 
Right. Newer day. Newer day, because I found a couple of errors okay. last night. Okay. Right. And. Uh, I mean, this right. is a problem. If every day you find an error. Well, but I checked all the numbers systematically, except for the margin of errors and one other thing. But I'll check those. Okay, so you're going to check those, and then that's it. And then that's, that's it. it. I checked every number. I know you've checked and recheck and recheck and recheck and recheck. Okay, and then you've been misdirected. Yes, that one. And so, so, Mary, let me ask you a question. Are those the three documents you want to see forwarded, or do you also want to see all the documents? But I'm suggesting that the task force say, this is the Cover summary. the summary of the data. This is what we want to present to council. Right. And then we have all this other accompanying stuff if you really want to. Yeah. If you want to. Read. to. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all, we, all we need to do is send it to council. This that is like technology. Yeah. So let's make sure everybody understands what that is. And then we all want to go home. Oh, I don't need it. Other good ideas like the one you just brought up. They could perhaps be part of the next. Okay, so are we all on the same page? Do we yes. all know what the proposal is? So one simple way we do this in some is you give a thumbs up. Do you understand what the proposal is? If your thumbs up, that means you understand. If you're not clear what the proposal is. I do have just a So but send you it to council. You send it to council. Oh, you mean this or the, the concept of sending it to council? I just need to know what it works. Sending it to council and that means that it automatically is released as our report, right? That's... Yes. Okay, all right. Is this considered official or semi-official? That's what I'm right. Quasi-official. That I understand, right? That's what Mary, this means. Okay. Man, do, you, do you want to restate okay. what you're saying? So you I do? make the okay. motion that the task force send this document. Three page, entitled, three page. Yellow, yes. three page, Yellow Springs Justice Task Force okay. Data Analysis of Police Warning and Citation. November 9th. Dated November 9th. Okay. So, and, right. and say, this is, the sum, this is our present summary of the whatever that report is called. This is this is the present summary. We anticipate that we will maybe continue what? It's after. a living document. It's a yes, living, living document. document. Yeah, yeah. Very we want to get it to council. <laughs> then all these other things are accompanying documents for people. And by who these aren't other reading. things you're holding up yeah. the rest well, of the packet that we received. And everything right? John's talked about. Yeah. The two John's other things, the law summary, summary, summary by John and then the report from John. Did you put a title? It should be executive summary of the you know for mine? Yeah. You, you want to need to rename it executive? I can do that. This I one? think that'll help us clarify. Okay, sure. It's a more it's sort of the middle step. There's it's the middle. It's yeah, it's the middle. Here's the cover sheet. There's the executive yeah. summary and there's the yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we're getting somewhere. So cool. is everybody Sounds clear great. on what the there's proposal second. is? Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody's clear on what the proposal is. Clear with what the proposal is. I do have a question. If this is a summary <laughs> and then he has an executive summary, which is Yeah, this is the executive summary. Because it's ours as the executive committee. You should have a summary and call the other things. I mean, not I think there should summary. be one thing that's the yeah executive yeah. summary yeah. or summary, what and then everything the else is a short report. Short report. The summary and the short report. A synopsis. The summary, the, the, the short report, the full report. Yes, is that is. Yeah. Summary, short report, full report. Here. Full report. Are we good with that idea? Summary is what we have. Short report is what John has. Yeah. Full report is the longest, the longest doc. Who's, who is sending things? So are things going to? Well, John still has to finish the details. Are is yours? Ready? It's ready if people okay. can write, but no, I it's ready. One typo. No, we've, there's this one, one people. I read it online. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's very good. Okay. And I must say, we need to be ready also, not because I don't want anybody to know this or hide anything, just in case anybody's listening. Um, but now we're saying, highlighted in blue, that we're uh, that, that younger residents and black males and uh, somebody else is somebody else in here. It's males, males, more males, more young people, and more black people are blue in this thing. So you know, we might be hearing from other groups about, about this. Okay. Okay. Because of the choice of color? No. <laughs> <laughs> what we've been talking about is just oh, one we've been conclusion. Talking about just there are several conclusions that's in this right. report. So that's right. you know, other people might say, "Hey, I'm a kid. You know, so I know." So who is sending these things? things. Well, let's. Shall we vote on so and then we, we, we voted. Okay, so is there a second? 
Yes. 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 I got a very second. And then any further discussion? Any further discussion? So all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. It's not, it's not unanimous. Not unanimous. I'm sorry. Abstain. I'm abstaining for a variety of reasons. Okay. Not because I disagree with the content of the report. Thank Please you. make sure everyone understands that. But for other reasons. Okay. Any other abstentions? So everybody but one abstention. Okay. Fine. All right. And then Pat, you had a process question. Who are you sending these things? I can do it. Okay. So, so that means that Pat or Beth. I've sent, I've sent my version. It's to Pat. Yeah, I, I, I've sent it to you. No, but it should be taken, the draft should be taken off. I can do that. Yeah. So one word yeah. sign for formality's sake. I would like to see. Motion. We're sending a motion to send to, send to pay, like, please, I would say it. No, <laughs> no, no. Sending official. Judith is sending this one. the material to council, and so John will send his information to Judith and Pat. To and it will include a summary, a show report, yeah. and a full report. Just let me get the title of this down so I can. And I would like to make a suggestion. If Janet is willing, I mean, I think it would make a lot of sense for John and Dave to sit down together with mediation. And I wondered if Janet is willing to be that mediator since she's been a part of this. I think that would make a lot of sense. And maybe. Janet, I don't know who, uh, uh, I don't know if the leadership committee feels they're in a position uh, you know, that we could then consult with Janet and something like that for a committee work. Okay, so I, I, heard, I mean, I there might be other things that need to happen, but it seems like that would be some things that could So you're, you're suggesting a two-step thing to address the process issues going forward. One is something between John and David, but then also something more for the entire group. Well, well we want to talk about and then what then else for us to kind of figure out maybe with some advice from Janet, uh, next steps. And I don't know, this sounds like uh, Cindy and other people that they feel like they want something more. Yeah. 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 In terms of having a meeting the next week, next month, right. we want to try to have a meeting next month. Yes, we should have a meeting next month. Yeah. But I think you guys need to talk. And so for our group, let's, let's, I mean, I think our next agenda item has to be, how do we want to move forward on this issue, the issue of our inter, interpersonal you say you mean by this. But the issue of how we're interacting uh, as a result of this problem, this thing that can be Will there be a okay. mediator for that? Because that, that seems to be sort of a, no, still sure. an open. We don't, we don't have, yeah, yeah, it's the elephant. We haven't quite a problem. Yeah, but didn't both me and David say that? I, I think what I would say as a mediator, too, that both of you know that if you would like to talk in mediation, you can contact the mediation program, or you can ask me personally. I'm willing to do that. So I would just say that, but that's up to you privately. And if you have questions or concerns about that, John Fudge or I would be happy to talk to you about what that looks like and what that means. I think so, we should deal with the task force, though. Yeah, so that's why. So how does the task force want to move forward on this issue? What issue? The issue of, of that we we discussed all night up until the last couple of minutes. <laughs> We haven't finished with what we talked yeah. about tonight. Let's talk about it next time or some other time. Okay, but do yeah. we, how do we want to have facilitated, right. not facilitated, I mean, what? Because we don't want to just talk about it endlessly. Yeah, yeah. right, you know. wait. No, I mean, like, you know, is this some even people relevant to most? Nothing has been resolved. Okay. No. Yeah. Other than you got the report really, released. But does Yay. people want to get that? There's still a fair amount of anger and frustration and sure. lack of trust broken so right. I think we need we do need a little more process and it's probably wiser to have it be facilitated. Right. Uh, we started the process, that's a good thing. Yeah. Let's keep it going. Yeah. We'll we'll start it so, wait, wait, wait. so you're saying that we're gonna like come back and talk about this again in December? Well, this John, is why I don't John, know that any point. Well, she said well, well, do you understand do you understand what this is? <laughs> They're talking about the how we do you know do you understand what like this is? This is because of the what Pat just said, the broken trust, the concerns, frustration. the frustration, the anger, the the disagreements, the, the disagreements <laughs> that people feel like there's more work to do about how you go forward working together, that that's not resolved for people, and you seem surprised. Well, the, the, what, yeah, why don't we do? Let's let's no. like do like just basically maybe a straw thing about who feels that we do want to spend more time on it. Is that fair to say? Do what? 
who feels that we do as a group want to spend more time resolving this trust, the anger issue? Um, okay. And then who, who would? I, I would like to see that, but I also like to see to avoid this in the future, some protocols put in place. Yes, I, I'm, yeah. I You can put some be, protocols in place, I, we ain't gonna have this problem. Um, Brian, yeah. Alex, and I are gonna get together to be talking about this issue, or other issues about permission. So we can email you with things that we think are concerns sure. or lacking guidelines about? Yes, yes. And I also don't think we need to be spending an inordinate amount of time. Um, I know, guess I'd suggest that given that at least Pat right. and Cindy clearly are upset that they be included in the mediation. Well, I don't no. think, I don't know if that makes sense. I don't no, it, well, it's not, you, it's not, well, yeah. I guess I, I think mediate, I think do you mediate, well, I guess the <coughs> people who want to mediate have to decide to yeah. mediate. So right. Yeah. Right. But I mean, there has to be, some people are pretty much okay and other people aren't. And it's the people who aren't okay that need to have something happen. Mm -hmm. So what I will do is I will send an email. Is, this is okay, I'm sorry. Let me just say it like that. Yeah, I'd be happy to send an email to the group to make sure everyone has my personal email. And you can let me know what your interest is in either um, for the whole group or interpersonally with specific members of the group about what you need in terms of if mediation is what you're looking for. That be helpful? My first comment was I think there has to be mediation between John and David before we can make any progress on the other thing. Because until they, if they can resolve it, then I think I can work, I can work with the group. But when there, there's, until they can work it out, I, I'm going to have a very difficult time. Um, being part of this group. Well, can I ask a question? But it's too complicated. I, yeah. I don't mean to personalize this, but Cindy, you've sort of expressed throughout the night that you felt that the criticism of David was actually also a criticism of you. Yeah. And so should you be involved in this mediation no. effort also? Oh, this is between no. those two, but John has a responsibility to this group that he is, he is not addressing. And until that is addressed, we can talk to we're blue in the I'm face so and it's so not going to change anything. For you. No. I just want to say, clarify. No, I, I I get that too. I mean, I'm seeing John. I don't know John. Well, I think if I completely here, disagree with this myself, this I would still be protesting, protesting right now. Like, I'd like to finish talking. Yeah. I know when someone's being attacked, that's that there's a defense mechanism. So I don't know if that's what you're feeling, but my sense is that you just don't get what you've done and how it's impacted people. That's my sense. I have not heard that from you. That's that's my point. That's my sense too. You sit there smiling the whole time. You you haven't I, I haven't seen one time when you s seem to sincerely understand what you did today. Well, Al, I, I think we need to go away from each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think we're probably done. I have to go away from each other. I have to go away from each other. I have to go away from each other. I have to go away Sure. Okay. Well, let's just see if we have a slight, any, can we get any closure on, at, at our next meeting, do people want this to be the first item on the agenda or not? Let's just put it like that. I, I, I think the idea of these two getting right. together and then they're discussing it and <laughs> that sort of thing yeah. before it gets brought back to the group. I agree, okay, because uh, if it remains the same, then it's going to become toxic. And then when we when we meet next time, maybe they can report to us what their I mean, if they're comfortable reporting what their agreement was, uh, and then I then I'm willing to go on if I hear they have reached some kind of agreement. And even if, for me, even if they have made an agreement, I yeah. go on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like we've got, we got a, a little bit of a plan here. Yes. Okay. Good. So you guys will sort of let us know how this goes, and then based upon that, we'll know what the first item on the agenda is. I I will do that. I okay. think that we as a group still need to have a conversation because of you people. I'm not going to impose myself on others, but it's, it's it, has, it isn't going to go away no matter what we agree with. So let me, uh, I, I see people I think the next, up. The, the next thing we need to do, the only thing we need to do next time is to work on this until we're done. 
and we ought to be able to get it done on Grooveville. We shouldn't be, you know, the horse is almost dead. We need to kill it and move on. Okay. Okay. If it's dead, why ride it? <laughs> <laughs> does everybody, does everybody, does everybody, <laughs> I just want to make sure, does everybody know when our next meeting is? Somebody call out the date. Everybody's got it on their calendar. Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Uh, two, uh, the 12th. The 12th. Okay. Very good. And then um, <laughs> go ahead and see your names. No, it's, it's, it's fine. Right? Okay, so, uh, my name is yeah. Athena Fannin. I'm also known as the Mitchell Barker. Uh, my name is Athena Fan and I'm also known as Minerva Barker. As a result of this process, it came to light that something like roughly five to seven months of meetings were not recorded. I know that wasn't intentional. I know it wasn't, so I don't want to say that it was. But my request is that you incorporate as part of your process before you start the meetings that you have some sort of verbal check that the camera is on. Um, and that if it is not on, that you ensure that it is on. Um, and that you get, you know, once you're on, you get it on camera as well. That way there's never a time when there's not a recording, and there's never a time where then it's, it's very confused about what actually happened. And I think if you just incorporate that in your process, it could really make sure that that particular issue is resolved. And that's Thank all you. Said. Okay. Thanks. Yes. So that. I think we yes. should make a motion that these be kept as public documents because there was a question about from our clerk whether this was a public document. So maybe, I, think we I, can thought they were. I thought they were too. Yeah, well, maybe ask was, her lawyer. Well, no, I think we should ask that be held as a public. We can just ask that. No. Sure. Uh, does anybody object to that? that? No, I don't know. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is there any is there the motion of the night? So moved. Which is to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? French. Any opposed? Yes. It's Any abstentions? Yes. 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 Yes.